Good afternoon. So, 1994, uh, the first uh, administration of uh, Clinton and Hillary Clinton, who is the first lady, organizes a conference at the White House on early childhood education and neuroscience. Uh, it turns out that way back then, uh, we didn't know very much about the effects of experience on the human brain. Fast forward now to 2019, and a group of us who are, have been working for about 10 years at the National Scientific Council for the Developing Child believe that we can communicate to policymakers, to educators, and to parents about the importance of experience on the brain. So what I'm going to do this afternoon is tell you three core concepts that are important about the effect of experience on the brain, and hopefully three takeaway messages that are associated with each of those core concepts. So, the three core concepts. The first is brain architecture. Um, think of it as a metaphor. How do you build a house? Well, you start with a strong foundation. After you have that strong foundation, you put up the walls, you do the wiring. But without a strong foundation, the house is not going to be properly situated and may in fact fall down. Similar with brain development. Without a strong foundation, the brain is not going to develop properly and experiences are not going to be met and experienced as they should be. Second metaphor, serve and return. So this is, some of you may play tennis or may have played tennis. It's all about hitting the ball back and forth. But the metaphor here is about what babies and young children need and want in the world. They want to be able to interact with people. They want to interact with their caregivers. They want a back and forth, a dialogue. And they want that dialogue starting very early in life and throughout early childhood. It's important. It supports healthy brain development. The third metaphor is a little bit tricky because when we put it together, we were wondering how could we talk about the issue of stress and its effect on the brain. So the problem here is, is that everybody experiences stress, right? If you say to somebody, well, you know, are you stressed? Are you stressed out? Yeah, everybody is stressed out. Everybody has experienced stress, but there is a type of stress that we call toxic stress which does deleteriously affect brain development. And that stress where the child, the infant or the child, does not have the buffering of a caregiver or a community. Okay, let's go to the three takeaways from these three core concepts. Here's a graph that I love showing, mostly because I like to say that you can see what we mean by changes in the brain. We talk about plasticity, that's how easily the brain can change. And you can see here that in the first years of life, it's easy for the brain to change. When I think about myself and I go over here, <laughs> it's not so easy anymore, right? The blue line is the effort that you need to change the brain for that plasticity to work. And you can see here that as you get older, it becomes harder and harder for you to change your brain, right? But what's the take-home message here? The take-home message here is that early is important. Brains change rapidly early in life, and plasticity is greatest early in life, and the effort that a child needs to learn is least early in life. They can learn languages, they can learn motor skills, they can learn sports, and all sorts of things that are difficult once you get older. So early is the most important thing here in terms of brain development. 
Second take-home message, serve in return. So if interaction between individuals, particularly between a child and its caregivers, is so important, why are we separating infants and young children at the border and separating them from their parents and their caregivers? Why are we leaving them caged up in horrible places? They don't have the opportunity to experience serve and return, and they don't have the opportunities that will allow them strong and healthy brain development. So serve and return is critically important for healthy brain development, but taking that away from infants and young children is really deleterious to their development. Third take home message, toxic stress. So I've been working in Romania, it's a country in Eastern Europe. Some of you may remember that it had a, a history of uh, separating families from their infants early in life and placing those infants and young children in institutions. Those infants, pictured here in this uh, image, they experienced toxic stress. And we know from the work that we've done there that toxic stress affects the brain, even at this early age for these children. So if I show you images here, you can see a positive relationships and extreme neglect and extreme neglect, that's from our Romanian institutionalized infants and positive relationships from children who are raised in families. What's the take home message here? The take home message is that communities need to support each other and families to provide them with access to early childcare and early education, not just starting at pre-K, but starting early in life. Because in order for us to allow children to develop to the potential that we would like them to have, we need to provide them with the supports, community supports, that will allow them to thrive. Thank you.